So you've been diagnosed with high triglycerides or hypertriglyceridemia. That's bad. But what I'm about to tell you in this video is good, very good. You see, hundreds of thousands of people all over the world have reversed their triglycerides back to normal. And that's a huge thing. That's, that's important because having elevated triglycerides, hypertriglyceridemia, can increase your risk of heart attack, heart disease, and stroke. If your triglycerides are high enough, they can actually increase your risk of a life-threatening condition called pancreatitis. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with 20 years of clinical experience, and this video is going to tell you what causes high triglycerides and how you can fix it permanently. The doctor who diagnosed you with high triglycerides probably told you that the solution for that was to add something to your system, namely a pill. They might have talked about diet, exercise, weight loss, but they gave it only the, the just a superficial treatment. They really didn't tell you anything that you didn't already know, like move more, eat less, right? You've heard that before. That's not new. But they will almost invariably want you to add a pill to your regimen, whether that's a statin or a prescription strength omega-3 fatty acid like Lovasa or Vicepa, or they'll want you to add a fibrate like Lopid or Tricor. And these things do lower your triglycerides a little bit, some of them not much at all, but they don't address the root cause of your hypertriglyceridemia. They don't, they don't in any way correct the underlying problem that caused you to have high triglycerides to start with. Now, many doctors, dietitians, and other healthcare providers will tell you that it's genetic. There's nothing you can do about it. You've just got high triglycerides. You need to take your pills, try to lose weight, and just live with it because there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, there is a tiny genetic component, uh, meaning that some people are more, are more likely to have high triglycerides than others. But again, that's not the root cause. That just increases your likelihood of developing it. The root cause is what you eat and what you drink. Let's talk for just a minute about the cutoff lab values for the diagnosis of high triglycerides. And then I'm gonna tell you what you can start doing today for free to completely reverse your hypertriglyceridemia and keep it normal for the rest of your life. So the cutoff levels for triglycerides at the point where they're considered high is 150 milligrams per deciliter or if your country measures it the other way, it's 1.69 millimoles per liter. And so if your triglycerides are above that level, you are at increased risk for heart attack, heart disease, and stroke. The research has borne this out pretty conclusively. If your triglyceride levels are above 500 milligrams per deciliter or 5.65 millimolar, millimoles per liter, then you are at greatly increased risk of developing pancreatitis, which can be fatal. So pay attention to the next steps I'm gonna tell you. If you have high triglycerides, that's a life-threatening risk factor. You wanna follow these steps very closely so that you can reverse your high triglycerides back to normal. The most important concept that I want you to take away from this video is that eating fat does not raise your triglycerides. Repeat that after me. Eating fat does not cause high triglycerides. What causes high triglycerides in the human mammal is eating too many total carbohydrates and then specific kinds of carbohydrates. That's what leads to hypertriglyceridemia. So uh, tip number one is to decrease your total carbohydrate intake. Now, absolutely, the carbohydrates I want you to eliminate first are the highly processed carbohydrates like cookies, pies, cakes, candy, breakfast cereals, pastries. All this stuff is just sky high in carbohydrates and has no nutritive redemption whatsoever. You need to stop all that crap. All the jams, the jellies, the sauces, the syrups, any kind of high sugar uh, condiment 
or main dish or side dish is going to spike your blood sugar. It's going to cause your liver to have to turn sugar into triglycerides. And you don't want that because as we said earlier, that's an increased risk factor for multiple bad medical conditions. So cut your total carbohydrates. Now for many people, just cutting out the junk, highly processed carbohydrates is all they need to do to get their triglycerides back down to normal. Other people, and it's probably people who have that genetic predisposition I talked about earlier, they have to cut the carbohydrates even more. And so many, many people, if they get their total carbohydrate intake under 100 grams a day, and by doing that, just get rid of all the junk, highly processed carbs, their triglycerides return to normal. Some people, that, that'll help, but it's not enough. They actually have to lower their carbohydrate intake down to 50 total grams a day, cutting out lots of fruit uh, and other seemingly healthy carbohydrates in order to get their triglycerides back to normal. I promise you, if you're one of these people, <clears throat> the magical phytonutrients you lose from the, the high carbohydrate, high sugar fruits and vegetables are not gonna cancel having high triglycerides. It's just too dangerous, okay? Step number two is to really focus on lowering your fructose intake. Fructose has been shown in multiple studies to directly cause an elevation in triglycerides. So the two most important things you wanna get out of your diet are high fructose corn syrup containing soft drinks and any kind of drink, and then also sucrose containing soft drinks and beverages because sucrose is made up of glucose and fructose. High fructose corn syrup just has a little bit higher percentage of fructose, but it's still basically sucrose with a little fructose added. But what many people don't know is that there is a ton of fructose in fruit juices and a ton of sugar. And some fruit juices actually have more fructose and more sugar than soft drinks. Yeah, and so for most people, Fruit juices and fruit juice smoothies are just as bad for high triglycerides as the soft drinks. Number three, you need to replace the carbohydrates that you've removed from your diet with healthy fats. Remember I said earlier, eating fat does not raise your triglycerides. You wanna replace your, your carbohydrate overdose that you were previously suffering from. You wanna replace that with good healthy fats from animals and from plants. Step number four is you've got to cut back on the alcohol. Some people can lower, just decrease their alcohol consumption down to one or two drinks a day, and that's going to get their triglycerides back down to normal. Other people have to become almost abstinent from alcohol in order to get their alcohol or their triglyceride level back down to normal levels. It's so important to have normal or even lower triglycerides for your overall health and longevity, that it's worth never having another drink if you're one of the people who has to employ that strategy. Then step number five is to review all of your medications, both prescription medications and over-the-counter medications, because there's actually a list of medications that are known to raise your triglycerides. Yeah, I've actually got a video on this channel about it. It'll pop up here at some point. You can watch it when this video is finished. Lowering your triglyceride level in your blood work is just one of many ways that you can improve your health, both physical health and mental health, increase your health span and increase your lifespan. I've got videos about all five of these tips I talk about in this video on this YouTube channel. Just look around and you'll find them and they'll help you improve your health in hundreds of ways. If you haven't already done so, please take one second and click that subscribe button and the little bell button right beside it so that every time I post a new video, you'll be one of the very first people to know. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.